What's up, YouTube? It's your boy JP. He's on the keys, and it's two Eastern videos today. And I figure since my channel is pretty much based in the UK, let's let's give Watch Mojo another chance because the last time we did a, Mo a Watch Mojo video, like two or three years ago, they were doing the best fire in the booths, and they had Drake as like number one. So we we, we don't we don't really, in terms of ranking, we don't really trust their judgment in that way. But this is. 10 things that only exist in the United Kingdom. Without further ado, leave a like if you enjoy it. That subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I'm working on a new video for my true crime channel. Uh, I'm working on a new gaming channel video. I'm working on a lot of stuff. This summer, man, we're gonna, we're gonna put out a good amount of videos, man. We're gonna really get, we're gonna get cracking this summer, man. But without further ado, let's just get it, man. This is where it all began. Greg's first shop opened in Gosforth in Newcastle 68 years ago. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be looking at 10 things that only exist in the UK. Oh, we get smashed! Oh, no, really? Oh, God. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at products, shops, and more that you can only find in the United Kingdom. Let us know which is your favourite in the comments below. Party 7 You'll have to be a certain age to remember Party 7, since, in its original form, it disappeared back in the 1980s. Tenor says he did it. I, I, I'm not playing. Tenor and a Party 7. This was a tin of beer that was the equivalent of seven pints in one big can, which would have cost about a tenner in today's money, though it originally cost 15 shillings. <coughs> so they, so they just put the beer in a big ass can. <laughs> I guess you're supposed to pour it in a cup like... <laughs> I mean, I guarantee you it was somebody that really drank from that. Like, just straight from the tin, too. I know it was people that did that. It's a testament to how much the Brits love booze that such a product existed and remained popular, despite its propensity to explode and supposed poor quality. Right, the chosen vintage of the CID. Then, in the 2020s, Party 7 had a brief renaissance when the beer returned in a keg format in 2021. Little Chef It was a sad time in 2018 when the final Little Chefs closed their doors. Once upon a time, every long car journey could be livened up by a trip to a Little Chef, which lined motorways up and down the country. You could go in there and get classic food, like a full English breakfast for a steal. A boon not only to families giving their kids a chance to stretch their legs, but lorry drivers needing a pick-me-up after hours on the road. It struggled for years following its decline in the 2000s, and eventually shut all its branches. But for decades, it was a British cultural icon. A little chef goes a long way. The house so it's like a McDonald's, like, like, a, like, a, like a gas, like a rest stop McDonald's on the way for little kids that serve kids meals. It's House of Lords. The most headline grabbing recommendation, abolishing this place, the House of Lords, in favor of an elected chamber. One of the most controversial things in British politics, the House of Lords as of 2023 is still there and still affecting our laws. That's despite many attempts to reform it and lots of high profile and powerful politicians even saying they want to abolish it completely. I think there's a lot that needs to be done to change the House of Lords. What I'm not convinced about is that we need another elected chamber. It's one of the most bizarre parts of life in the UK, that we still have this system of hereditary aristocratic titles that mean unelected people, often rich landowners, get to sit there in Parliament and tweak or even outright block laws devised in the House of Commons. What people get very worried about is the size of the House of Lords and the appointment process for the House of Lords. They've got no real public accountability and are one of the strangest things about Britain to explain to foreigners. <clears throat> I mean, when you, when, you, when you have a system that still, like, is in some ways a monarch, not really, a, I mean, Britain really is the monarchy, but it's still, like, recognizes itself as a former monarchy like it still has kings and queens and 
and princes and all that, you know, it's, it's still kind of weird how in 2023, it's still, <clears throat> still up, you know what I mean? I mean, I see, I see what, why people would have a problem, because it's like these people who probably don't have any political knowledge, they're just here because they were born into the right family, you know what I mean? Like people who haven't had to work for anything in their life, haven't had to build from the ground up, just say, oh, I don't like that, oh, we can do something different with that, oh, we don't like that. Cornish pasties. Cornwall is a unique part of England with its own distinct culture, flag and even a native language. And it also boasts one of the most iconic British foodstuffs, the Cornish pasty. But the humble Cornish pasty is perhaps more important than you realise if you're not from Cornwall yourself, since it previously held protected status under EU law. Wow. This meant that only pasties meeting stringent requirements could truly call themselves Cornish. They've got to follow a strict recipe and be prepared in Cornwall. This was all done to protect the pasty industry, which uses local produce and provides jobs to many in the county. Tabloids. Wow, that's hmm, so it's like a kind of like a like a like a pot pie in a way. It looks like a pot pie, like like a like a differently shaped pot pie. It probably would have like some type of protein in there with some type of vegetable or whatever it is. Mm. Of course, most countries do have tabloids of their own, but tabloid culture in Britain is a law unto itself. Around the world, the UK is notorious for its relentless, unethical tabloids. Not only do British celebs find themselves at the mercy of the tabloid presses regularly, but so do celebrities from elsewhere who are deemed worthy enough to get harassed by UK red tops. Of course. For over a hundred years now, cheaply produced papers relying on sensationalist reporting <laughs> the and Daily Mail. the privacy of the rich and famous have been part and parcel of British life. So much so that it's strange to imagine that the media landscape is very different overseas. Colin the Cat. It is it. Quickly becoming the food fight of the century because the iconic birthday staple, Colin the Caterpillar, is going to war with lookalike Cuthbert. No child's birthday party is complete without a visit from Colin the Caterpillar. Caterpillar cakes are sold by every major supermarket, all boasting different names, though the original Colin version was introduced by M&S in the 1990s. Marks and Spencers are taking Aldi to court over the budget-friendly version of the cake, cake claiming that Cuthbert is not <coughs> only an imposter, but riding on the coattails of the supermarket's reputation. Marks and Spencers is so protective of its Colin name, in fact, that it tried to take Aldi to court for infringing on its intellectual property by releasing a Cuthbert the Caterpillar. You know, it's a bit unfair because you've got similar caterpillars. I think there's a Clyde in Asda and there's a, a Wiggle in Sainsbury's and an Eric. That suit was settled and Caterpillar cakes continue to be sold by all supermarkets, often as a cost-effective way to get a large amount of chocolate cake for your kids. I mean, it's like, it's like, so, so they were mad because they wanted to make a Dollar General version of, like a, a great value brand version of yours. <laughs> oh, wait, no, it's, it's not Coca-Cola, it's Dr. Thunder. <laughs> it's not Fanta, it's Orange Crush, Orange Crash. <laughs> what was the, what was the, it was, if you were living in America, like the fake, uh, Sarah, the fake 7 Up or Sierra Miss. It was like the Shastas. Oh my God. <laughs> Greg's. If you miss Little Chef, Greg's is one of the retailers that expanded to fill the vacuum it left behind. This is where it all began. Greg's first shop opened in Gosforth in Newcastle 68 years ago. But not only will you find a Greg's at every service station up and down the country, there's pretty much a Greg's on every single street. Sometimes two or even three branches all competing with each other. With its cheap, Tasty pastries and sandwiches, Greg's has invaded high streets around the country from hmm. its headquarters in Newcastle, which has over 30 branches alone. For its roots in the northeast, Greg's expanded steadily. In total, there were over 2,200 branches of Greg's, about 1,000 more branches than McDonald's, but it still only exists in the UK. It didn't even have any shops in Northern Ireland until 2016. Today, Greg's has more shops in Britain than either McDonald's or Starbucks and says it may launch abroad in the years to come. Tizer. Tizer! It's a red thing! Though its presence on supermarket shelves has waxed and waned, especially in recent years, Tizer is still sold by British retailers and turns 100 in 2024. It's manufactured by Bar, 
which also makes iron brew, but unlike the national drink of Scotland, Tizer has never really appeared in other countries. It remains such a niche drink that you might have thought it had been made defunct, and could have gone years without seeing a bottle. Yes, we have three great new flavours. No, we're not changing colour! Tizer, it's a red thing! Right? <coughs> so the drink is the drink is red, but it's different color, but it's different flavors. Is it like a juice or is it like a soda? It looks like a juice. Like it looks like it might be a juice. Hmm. Red and with a top secret recipe. Who knows what they really put in Tizer, which adds to the allure of the Great British Pop, as its slogan calls. Oh, it's a, it's a soda then. Henry Hoover. What British home is complete without a humble Henry to keep everything shipshape? Oh wow! Meet Henry from Pneumatic International. Henry and his numerous siblings like James and Hetty are certainly the most iconic vacuum cleaner in the UK thanks to his large googly eyes and cute appearance. They're not the best vacuums on the market, but we'll be damned if they're not reliable. So what is it that makes Henry the industry favourite? Is it the long life engineering and proven reliability? There aren't any bells and whistles on Henry, though some are designed for slightly different things. And buying him, you can be sure you've got a solid appliance that might even last a lifetime, hmm. but all without breaking the bank. It's all over the floor as well. Cheap vacuum, like okay. Please. Like the Bissells and the Dysons and all them. Mr. Blobby. Maybe the most bizarre thing to come out of British light entertainment, and that's saying something. Mr. Blobby has been a household name ever what since the his debut in the late 90s. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but his longevity defies all logic and reason. An absurd character who caused chaos on Noel's house party, Mr. Blobby now routinely reappears on TV and even on the stage. Because Mr. Blobby will be going on holiday soon, he needs to get a photograph for his passport. Even Blobby needs identification. Every time he does, he wreaks havoc, ruining segments, breaking items, throwing tantrums, and scaring children half to death. Oh, you smashed oh, the really? oh, oh, really? Why do they keep bringing him back when his only role is to smash things and screech like a banshee? Your guess is as good as ours. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. <laughs> Yo, I, I, like, it reminds me of like the, uh, you remember the McDonald's character? Like the, the purple, the purple potato looking dude from the McDonald's? Like, you know, like when McDonald's used to have characters and used to have like actual movies and shows and stuff. When it used to be fun to go to McDonald's. Whenever McDonald's had a play place. Now they, now they did away with the play places anymore. <laughs> I mean, but this was before every kid had a freaking iPhone and a tablet. But, you know, that was a good, that was a cool video. You know what I mean? That was a pretty cool video. Like, I... Some in me, I still want to, one of these days I want to travel to the UK and just like try a whole bunch of just like stuff. You know what I mean? Because those, uh, those, those pastry, those paste, those Cornish pasties, those pasties look good. Like, what do they put? It looks like a pot pie to me. So I, they probably put like different types of ingredients in them. They, pro they probably have the sweet pasties too. They probably have like chocolate and vanilla cream and all that stuff. But that looks fun. But I uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate everyone who came to this video. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed that. Subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Check out my post notifications. Turn those things on. You know what I mean? Turn on that bell. Check out my other two channels. Check out my Patreon. Check out my my Discord link. All that. But in other words, have a great day. Stay on the grind. Be safe. I'm out. Peace.